There is literally millions of rusting, old, classic, incredibly cool SUVs and old, beautiful cars sitting in paddocks, disintegrating into nothing. A lot of them, for good reason, they sucked. They were gasoline-powered bombs. They were so unreliable that they had the misfortune of being known as maybe the most unreliable and terrible cars to drive in history, but people still love them for some reason. Well, the Range Rover from the early 1970s was considered the first luxury SUV. But truth be told, they sucked. The reliability was unbelievably bad. I'm sure you've heard of how much they broke down. I mean, it's a running joke at Top Gear on just how terrible the original Range Rovers were. They were cool, but terrible. Kind of a strange combination. This particular Range Rover was a bucket of rust sitting out in a field doing nothing until some 14-year-old girls came along. And with the help of this educator, together, they built this beautiful new Range Rover. Now, the thing is, this Range Rover, it's now a classic car with the best elements of the old, combined with the absolute best elements of the new. And when I saw this thing, I went, I have to have one of these. This is absolutely beautiful. The interior was amazing. It runs a Tesla Model 3 battery pack, the electrics from a Model 3. It has a new modern digital screens. It's got the old interior, the old look on the outside. It looks classic. It's beautiful. But yet, 50-50 perfect weight distribution. Drives like an EV. It has the reliability of an EV, the beautiful nature of driving an electric car. It has no emissions. It's amazing. I can't believe a group of 14-year-old girls did this. But this is the future of engineering. This is the future of the automotive world. And it's one I have to say I'm very excited to be a part of. I'm here today. This is an exciting project. You know, EVs aren't just about selling cars, right? There's more to it. And so can you tell me who you are, what you're doing, and how you're basically changing people's experience around the cars? Sure yeah. thing. So I'm Graham Wiggins. I am the director of Bendigo Tech School. Yeah. Now we're a high-tech innovation hub that helps young people develop the skills they need for the future of work. So it's a big advantage for people to go to a school then. <laughs> well, we don't actually enrol students. We work with all the local schools to help them enhance their you know, STEM and enterprise capabilities. But what we're doing here is we have this gorgeous 1982 Range Rover Classic that two years ago was quietly rusting away under a tree in a paddock Whoa. that has been fully restored by young women in Bendigo. And um, we're I'm looking at this thing, it looks like real. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. It, yeah, so it's um, it's been a full disassembly and reassembly where our project partners are built in behind us here at the show. They've helped us engineer the high voltage systems uh, to turn this into an EV. Is this the future of classic cars? Oh, look, absolutely. Any, any car that's over 10 years old and is relatively carbon neutral, this is the way to make it carbon zero. I've seen a lot of enthusiasts and a lot of like six cars left in the world, they turn some of them in, into an EV. And you're like, if they're doing it, then clearly EVs are not only just a better car, but the perception is not that it's gonna wreck the car, the perception is gonna make it better. Well, and that's exactly what we're doing. We're taking something that was incredibly unreliable. Uh, they were, weren't they? Yeah. Reliability was... Amazing capability, yeah. but very poor reliability. And we're making it reliable, comfortable, more powerful. So we've doubled the power and doubled the torque with our conversion, with the Tesla. So what's the power and the torque? Uh, so it's, so originally it was 96 with a 3.5 V8. Yeah. We're up to 96 two, yeah. uh, kilowatts. Yeah. So, so we, that's about... 160 horsepower. Something like that. Yeah. And it's now 210 kilowatts, plus a 20% straight line acceleration yeah. uh, torque curve. And... Um, so you're getting instant torque, basically. Yeah. It's, it's a Tesla Model 3. Tesla Model 3 with a, a weight of ATB and a, and a reduction gear. So okay, you, all you four drivers <laughs> out there, yeah, this is the future. This yeah. is it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And look, okay, so let's let's get one thing clear. It's not going to do any serious waiting, um, but it's going to blow the doors off any other Range Rover Classic out there on the road. And it's all about um, preserving. So this, this car was just going to rust into the ground. So we've given it a second life. 
we're having a conversation with our community about the electrification and we're giving young women the opportunity to explore STEM you know, pathways in, in engineering and, and automotive uh, careers. So we're, we're, I, love what, I love what you're doing. I love this car. Looking at the detail, look, like looking at all the welds. I was looking at it before, I'm like, this, you've done a phenomenal job, man. Look at the pre precision here. What, did you do this? Like well, with the girls? Um, so a lot of the things that you're looking at with the with the high voltage conversion uh, yeah. with with fel ten, yeah. uh, but the uh, you know the overall restoration of welding, the paint that you're looking at, a lot of the smaller engineering solutions yeah. are us. So yeah, is it a model three battery pack? Uh, model, it, model it, three battery pack. It is full eighty four kilowatts, so yeah. it will have a, a decent yeah. range. And oh, so eighty four kilowatt battery. Yeah, yeah. So 16, 16 modules. Oh wow. Um, so so. So there's eight in the front, eight in the back, and the interest. So you've yeah. kept the weight balance equal yeah. by putting some of the back in the front. Yeah. So originally you had 450 kilograms of engine gearbox and transfer case. Yeah. That's now 96 in between the frames, but we've had to put 350 kilograms of battery split between yeah, so front and rear, so it should be a better weight distribution in theory. Would the weight be similar to the original car? Uh, identical, no change. Ah, how good is that? <laughs> Yeah, and you've got a way better car. I can imagine uh, experience driving this yeah. compared to an old fucking car. It's even better. Basically, it's like, it's like a retro like Porsche Stinger, right? Yeah. Uh, is that what they call it? No, Singer. Singer. Where, where the people paying like a million dollars uh, to get a, an old plastic Porsche and do basically what you've done here. And, and there's huge, huge demand for that. Yeah, well, it, it's not not a cheap thing to do, and we've been very lucky to have been given us really good philanthropy what would grant. It uh, well, it's hard to say because we haven't finished, uh, but we were given a philanthropic grant by Kirkland Lake Gold or Agnico Ego. They they rebranded all of our project, uh, two hundred thousand dollars, and of course the restoration costs on top of that. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's it's for the the. Um, People who have a bit more disposable income now, but I think in the future the cost might come down a little bit. What do you think? Oh, absolutely. At yeah. the moment, the technology is expensive because we're on a small scale, everything yeah. is very bespoke. Yeah. There's a few great players like Felton doing drop in conversion kits yeah. and systems based thinking, and everyone's eventually going to catch up, and, and that's how we'll do it. And that'll, that'll, you know, that'll be bulk production and bring the unit costs down. And of course, it's an innovation adoption curve. We're in the early adopters phase, we're only working with a very small percentage of the market. Uh, but the great thing is, anybody who loves their classic and can keep it on the road and it's all reversible you know all the people who say the sky is falling because there's no you know v8 noise anymore they're the same people who stood in front of a model 8 board and said oh it doesn't make a clip pop noise yeah is it hard to do this is it like you need like a really high level of engineering understanding or is it what do you call it say? Well we're working with the experts for the things that we don't have the expertise on and the stuff we can't but that's touch. Like any carbon, yeah, right? yeah. You have to use a lot of auto electrician to do it. Yeah, electric. absolutely. Yeah. And we're not going to touch high voltage, yeah. you know, um, you know, uh, sort of electrical engineering. Yeah, yeah. But you know, the vast majority of the work we're doing ourselves and the model is that we go to the, the workshop that we need to be in to do the work with the mechanic, with the spray painter, with the auto electrician, working in that environment and culture. It's a work experience on steroids. Yeah. yeah. I love what you're doing, mate. So <laughs> good you. to meet you, dude. Yeah, Thanks cheers. So much. No, good on you. I'm actually really yeah. excited about Electric, this. Electric, oh, look out for your channel. I haven't heard of it. But you haven't heard of it? Oh. No. And that's, that's Della over there. She's, she's the student who's been with the Okay, hey, hey. Office. How are you? <laughs> great work. You've done a great job. Thanks. Uh, your work on this is exciting. Yeah. Oh, you be doing this you're Ill and all that. Like, oh, really? Yeah. Oh. That, that was what all my guy friends said. And were they just joking or were they serious? No, they were serious. Oh, really? Okay. And then all my friends were just like, oh, you should like go into chefing or hospitality. And I'm like, no, I want to do this. That's good. And, and how old are you? 15. I'm very impressed. Well done. Thank you. I'm, I'm actually really excited as well because this is going to be an amazing car on it. Yeah. Yeah. So, have a great day. See ya. See ya. Thank you, buddy.